Thank you for your very uh, kind uh, uh, presentation. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's for me uh, a great pleasure and a great uh, honor to address this very distinguished uh, uh, audience. It's for me a privilege to participate in these world-renowned uh, uh, meetings of the Peterson uh, uh, Foundation. So thank you uh, to you all for being here today. And uh, I'll try uh, throughout my presentation to concentrate in what I consider the key points, because you have uh, all the material uh, with you, so you can look through it uh, uh, whenever you think uh, uh, is useful. So I will concentrate uh, in some uh, 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 relevant aspects. First of all, everybody knows in the world there is uh, duality between developed and emerging uh, countries. The fact that Santander is present, uh, 50, uh, let's say, of our businesses in emerging countries and 50 percent immature countries give us a unique perspective to understand what is going on in, the, in this uh, duality that yesterday uh, released figures of projections of the IMF have already underlined how the world is progressing in a way that the mature economies is where the problems lie, whereas in the emerging more, uh, 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 economies we have a pretty sound uh, situation. Well, if you compare what is happening in the US in terms of uh, the design of the framework of uh, macroeconomic policy, this is a totally different uh, vision. I mean, in the US, you have a degree of flexibility. Uh, the uh, Federal Reserve, uh, if it deems uh, it is appropriate, is, is ready to intervene and to uh, apply a very flexible monetary uh, policy, whereas in Europe, this process is, is very cumbersome. It's a, it's a process in which the decision making is extremely complex <coughs> and we lack a proper lender of last resort uh, for sovereigns. This is the root of the problem of Europe today, that we have to apply a very restrictive uh, fiscal policy, but we don't have at the same time, coupled with that, a, a sufficiently uh, flexible monetary policy, and we lack certainly a lender of last resort for sovereign uh, debt. As a result of that, there is a, a, a situation of instability in the, in the sovereign uh, 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 debt markets. And as an example for that, in this chart, you see the spread of the uh, government debt in Spain and, 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 and Italy compared with Germany. And the spreads went as high as nearly 650 uh, basis points compared with Germany. Uh, as you can all understand, it's impossible to work properly within a monetary union with you have such discrepancies be between the core countries' capacity to uh, finance themselves and the uh, southern uh, uh, European countries, in this case Spain and Italy. We, we have to pay for our debt uh, on top of 400 basis points today in order to properly fund uh, 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 ourselves. This creates a number of problems because obviously this, uh, there is a correlation between the spread of the sovereign debt and our uh, cost of borrowing for the corporates in Spain and for the banks in Spain. That means that when we translate in our credits the monetary policy, we are having spreads for our customers that are much higher than the comparables in Germany or in France. To give you an example, that puts at a disadvantage, a huge disadvantage, Spain corporates when they have to compete uh, with the rest uh, uh, of Europe. Well, uh, 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 Europe is trying to, to solve this, uh, uh, this uh, question. And uh, uh, the way to solve this question is getting to a banking union. And uh, uh, one of the results of the recent uh, European summit uh, back in June was precisely to try to establish a banking union with a single supervisor, a single uh, rule book, and a deposit uh, warranty uh, scheme trying to get out of this connection between sovereign debt and the banking uh, problems. But uh, uh, if you look how this is going to affect in Spain, in Spain we have both a, a domestic problem, this is a result of uh, a large increase in the, in the private and public debt in the years of the expansion of the Spanish economy, but once we enter in the, into uh, the problems, uh, uh, we, are, uh, we have this problem coupled with the lack of lender of large resource in Europe that I, I mentioned earlier. So you have an economic recession as a result 
of the need to deleverage the economy and to regain the competitiveness that Spain lost in the uh, uh, first 10 years of the uh, economic uh, uh, union. And then you have to address the problem of the public sector finances, and then you have to address the problem of the financial uh, uh, sector. And I will go into some more details later about these elements. Well, the process of deleveraging of the Spanish economy in terms of the GDP uh, uh, has had a, a very important impact, as you see in this chart. The Spanish e economy, uh, 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 the growth of the Spanish economy was uh, very uh, significant over the, last, uh, the first uh, seven uh, years of the decade. I mean, with the growth of the economy in excess of 3%, and suddenly, when the crisis arose, we had a, a, a very deep dip decision, we slightly recover, and then we have a kind of double dip of the economy that now, in the, according to the latest projections, the economy uh, of Spain is going to shrink in the region of 1.5% this year, and the projection of the IMF for next year is also uh, an additional decrease of GDP in the region of 1.3%. Uh, if you compare with the uh, average of the Eurozone, in terms of growth, the, the, the Spanish economy was outgrowing the average of Europe during the, uh, the, the positive uh, first uh, seven years of the decade, and afterwards there was a clear underperformance in terms of growth of the Spanish uh, uh, economy. Well, in, 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 in trying to address uh, uh, these economic problems, uh, the government uh, uh, is taking some measures, in my view are very positive ones, such as the pension reform, uh, delaying the retirement uh, age to uh, 67 uh, years, a very important labor reform that addresses the question of the rigidity of the labor market in Spain. That is one of the reasons why in periods of crisis the Spanish economy gets an unemployment rate as high as 25% that we have today. This is the reason of the root of that is the labor market. And the government has done a great effort in trying to uh, deregulate the labor market and to flexibilize the, the, the labor market. Then there's been the fin financial uh, uh, restructuring uh, to clean up the, the balance sheets and uh, to create a consolidation of the banking uh, structure. In terms of the financial restructuring, this is extremely important. In Spain, we had a dual, we had a dual uh, financial system. When on one hand, you have uh, uh, commercial banks, uh, privately owned, and listed in the markets, and you have 50% of the system that were the saving banks. The saving banks had a very poor governance system with very much uh, political influence in the appointments to the governing uh, units of the uh, saving banks, and too much concentrated in real estate. And they were the cause of the problems that are happening today in the uh, Spanish economy. As a result of this financial restructuring, we don't longer have saving banks, now they have transformed into banks. They have been restructuring, uh, shrinking their capacity, installed capacity, and in the process of re-injecting uh, uh, capital, we'll think that a combination of additional capital for this weak uh, segment of the Spanish sector plus restructuring will go going to have a very sound and competitive financial uh, sector. This is one of the element uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, positive outlook in the structural terms for the Spanish economy going ahead. Another positive element besides this uh, uh, restructuring uh, or these reforms are the external sector. The external sector, as you see in this chart, is being uh, a very positive in terms of uh, the exports, uh, as you see here, compared with the other countries, important countries of the Eurozone and with the average of the Eurozone, the exports in Spain have been growing recently faster than the average of the Eurozone. That means that uh, the Spanish economy, in fact, is regaining competitiveness, as is shown in the, in the level of exports. And also a very important uh, element, which is the unit uh, labor costs that were, I mean, uh, losing, making us lose competi competitiveness during many years, as you see in this chart. Uh, in the, starting with the year 2008, we are recovering uh, competitiveness through uh, 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 lowering of the unit uh, labor cost. So, so we have a picture in which we have fundamental problems. We are trying to address the fundamental uh, problems through reforms, and at the same time, these reforms are having a positive uh, uh, impact 
in terms of regaining competitiveness uh, for the economy. Another uh, important element is the public sector deficit and the sustainability of the government debt. Well, another important structural reform is being to put into the Constitution, the Spanish Constitution, a financial stability law. That means that uh, the government is going to be more able to meet their objectives and to put a degree uh, of control on the expenses and the, and the deficit of the regions of Spain, which was obviously an issue because the government can control, obviously, the, the, the expenditures of the central government, but there is another uh, part of the government, which are the regions in which you, have, you need tools in order to make them comply with the objective. Now, the, the government has the proper tools to address this, uh, this issue, and in the process of uh, uh, addressing the, 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 the fiscal situation, as you see in this chart, we have a, 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 a totally out of control uh, deficit in year 2009, with a deficit exceeding 11% of the GDP, and now we are in the road to reducing this deficit. I mean, the very important issue, what well, the markets are wondering, is about the capacity of the government to get to the 6.3% uh, the uh, public sector deficit this year. There are a degree of skepticism in the markets about the capacity of the government to deliver. But the government is confident that they can uh, get to this uh, figure, and if they were to get there, I think it would be a very important positive message for the market, that the Spain is able to comply with the objectives of reduction in public sector deficit. That means for this year 6.3%, next year 4.5%, uh, and, and going into less than 3% uh, the year after. It's not going to be easy because when you have uh, the economy in a recessionary environment, it's very difficult to increase revenues and it's very difficult to reduce uh, expenses because much, uh, a lot of expenses are linked with the macroeconomic situation, like the ones related to unemployment benefits. In terms of the financial sector, uh, we had to address a problem of real estate exposure, a problem of funding, a problem of uh, overcapacity, and a, a problem of corporate governance and transparency. Most of these issues are linked with the saving banks. Because by definition, the saving banks were operating with real estate. That means there was a degree of concentration with real estate that created a lot of problems for, the, uh, for these saving banks. In terms of funding, there was also a problem because there was a flight to quality towards the stronger institution that makes that the capacity at the cost of funding of this weaker segment of the, uh, of the sector was uh, much more affected. There was a problem throughout the system of uh, overcapacity. Our guess is that the overcapacity in the Spanish uh, uh, financial sector will be in the region of 30%. And this uh, problem is going to be addressed because as a result of in the injection of public sector money, uh, uh, Brussels is going to take tough measures in terms of uh, the restructuring of the sector. And it's going to order uh, uh, the banks that have been uh, uh, the object of uh, public sector uh, uh, money injection to restructure in a very aggressive uh, fashion. And then, uh, once again, in the corporate governance, the fact that you had 50% of the system without proper market controls, uh, with a system of uh, corporate governance very much influ influenced by uh, political aspects, meant also that the transformation into banks of this institution, and having uh, uh, some of them or most of them listed in the markets, is going to address this issue of corporate uh, 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 governance. I will skip this uh, because are some of the details of uh, the restructuring uh, of the financial uh, sector, and even more so this that is very much detailed uh, uh, elements. Let me underline uh, 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 this element, which is very important in this slide, which is uh, according with the MOU uh, signed by the Spanish government uh, with uh, uh, the European Union, uh, uh, that allows for the injection of uh, European money into a Spanish bank, there were a number of compromises accepted by the government, one of the most important being the fact that the system uh, had to go through a thorough process of uh, uh, stress testing, with an exercise bottom-up, with an exercise top-down, and uh, being uh, done in a very independent fashion, because this exercise had enjoyed the participation of the European Central Bank, of the IMF, 
and the uh, European Union uh, itself. So that means there was a very thorough, very comprehensive, with hypotheses in terms of the uh, adverse scenario that you see in this slide, uh, expecting the economy or, for, uh, or, or putting ourselves in the position of the economy uh, shrinking this year 4.1%, uh, which is not going to happen, certainly. Next year, 2.1% decline, and year 2014, 0.3%. And with the decline, to underline another important point of uh, uh, the uh, unemployment rate going through the roof to 27%, and housing prices declining close to 20% this year and 4.5% next year. That's very, I mean, uh, uh, very tough uh, scenario. And, and when you uh, analyze the impact of this very adverse scenario on the Spanish banks, you end up with the figures that have been recently published, and you have this in this slide, in which Santander enjoys surplus in, uh, in the region of 25 billion euros of capital in spite of this very adverse scenario. And then you have, on the other hand, a number of banks, formerly uh, saving banks with the exception of Banco Popular, and it will go into Banco Popular later on, that required, according to this exercise, 54 billion euros. In the case of Banco Popular, it's the only exception of a commercial, formerly commercial bank needing uh, uh, this kind of help. Uh, it's launched, it has announced recently, it's launching a rights issue uh, with a, an amount of 2.5 billion euros, and it will overcome uh, shortly, and we expect uh, Banco Popular to overcome all these capital requirements. In the, by their own means, I've been mean, going to the market with the right issue with no government help. That means that the, the cost of this crisis in terms of injection of additional capital will be in the region of 40 to 50 uh, billion euros, which is a man manageable amount in terms of the Spanish GDP, which we are talking in the between 4 and 5 percent of the Spanish uh, GDP, which is not, I mean, a, a, an unsurmountable amount uh, to be dealt with. That means that regardless whether this uh, injection of capital is being done directly to the government and thus adding to the uh, government debt or injected into the bank, in which case is not adding to the government debt, we are talking of 4% of government debt. Uh, this is a, lot, a number of discussions whether this money is going to be injected into the government or into the banks, but at the end of the day, Regardless of where direction goes the injection of, of capital, we are talking about a not a very uh, large amount in terms of uh, debt adding, to, adding debt to the, to the GDP. Well, let's now, to end up uh, uh, with this uh, analysis, what is the experience of Santander? I mean, obviously, Santander has proved to be uh, very resilient throughout the crisis. You see. Uh, the pre-provision profit of the, of the bank throughout the crisis, climbing and reaching uh, uh, this first uh, semester, a new half record, uh, year record with 12.5 billion of earnings uh, before uh, provisions in, the, in this period of time. So very resilient as a result, basically, uh, of the diversification, the fact that we have a system of standalone subsidiaries that protects through firewalls uh, the, 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 the bank if uh, any systemic crisis would happen in any of the markets in which we operate. We are a, a retail banking operation, we have a retail banking focus, so we are not in the issues whether we have to uh, uh, differentiate our investment banking activities for retail banking activities or property trading activities for the rest activities, because we are mostly a retail banking operation, so we are not into these uh, regulatory dilemmas in which we have to divest or to uh, change our, our way of doing business. We have a strong uh, uh, base of capital and liquidity, and we have a, 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 a very a good efficiency and risk culture as you will see in, in these slides that underline with figures what I mentioned earlier. You see here the, 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 the diversification of our, of our group, in which in countries such as Brazil, we have 26% of our earnings, in Mexico 12%, in Chile 6%, in the other Latin American countries 6%. I see that, and you added that Poland 4%, in emerging markets, we have roughly speaking uh, half of our, of our earnings. The rest you see here, also well diversified and within in, in countries such as strong as uh, the US or the UK or Germany are a very important chunk 
of our business. That means diversification is our key aspect in understanding Santander and the resilience of Santander against the crisis. The fact that of having a, a decentralized model with legally independent subsidiary means that the, a, a, if any crisis were to happen in one of the markets in which we are, we are able to, uh, 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 firewall, to have a firewall around this, this element of crisis, affecting our uh, uh, balance sheet just by the investment done in those countries without spillover impacts in other uh, segments of our business. When we present in, uh, presented to Bank of Spain our living wills, this is one thing that uh, uh, we underline, and the Bank of Spain uh, uh, accepted this as a, one of the great strengths of Santander, the fact of having these uh, uh, standalone independent subsidiaries. Well, the fact of, of having a retail banking operation with the uh, largest branch network in the, in the world uh, give us an, uh, an access to retail deposits a source of a stable liquidity and not overly dependent on, uh, uh, on financial markets to fund ourselves. We fund ourselves basically as a typical retail banking operation through deposit. This was another interesting feature of Santander. To the extent, as you see here, the total uh, ratio of loan to deposit is slightly above 100% for the group as a whole. We are talking about 117%. Uh, which is practically, we are funding the totality of our assets with deposits and with a very strong uh, position in core capital according to B, uh, BIS regulations above 10, uh, 10 In terms of efficiency, which is key for any uh, retail banking operation, you see in this chart how uh, uh, the eff efficient of uh, Santander uh, uh, makes us uh, a very extremely competitive banks in, in, in all the markets in which we operate because, I mean, in times of crisis, also the, the fact that we have an extremely efficient uh, bank is also helping us uh, very much uh, throughout this period. Well, uh, for us, we have a model of, uh, uh, of risk management. It's very unique. In Santander, uh, uh, there are a structure in which, in which the risk management is totally independent from the business uh, unit. Uh, and the, uh, and the, uh, myself, as the head of, uh, of, of risk of Santander, report, I report directly, strictly to the, to the board of, of directors, and I chair twice a, a week a, a, a meeting uh, to analyze the risk policy of the bank with five members of the board. That means we have a, a very robust corporate governance and risk management that has served us uh, also uh, very well uh, uh, throughout uh, uh, the, the crisis. Just to conclude, uh, and I'd be uh, uh, most willing to try to answer any questions you may have about this presentation. We think that the world financial sector faces a challenging economic and regulatory environment. Though some of these aspects of regulatory uh, implications are not affecting Santander due to our, uh, to our business model. Europe is in a critical point, no doubt, and we have in Europe uh, to put in place a proper uh, a mechanism in order to address uh, the, the issue of the lender of large resort of sovereign debt and the recent uh, uh, approaches by the European Central Bank go uh, straight in this direction, that providing a support for the sovereign debt in the Eurozone, which is critical in this phase of the, of the cycle and, and, and uh, most of, uh, also looking, looking forward to the proper structure. The European uh, uh, Banking Union it, uh, uh, will be a, a significant step uh, forward, that, uh, but uh, I think that it's going to take time to have uh, uh, this in place, because I mean to change the supervision of 6,000 uh, banks in Europe is a tough job. Uh, and so there are uh, some questions as to the ability uh, of Europe to put in place this uh, system of supervision uh, as it was uh, announced before at the start of uh, next year. Uh, Spain is under uh, severe economic and financial adjustment, but there are many elements, positive elements, in terms of the structural uh, reforms being made in Spain. So I'm uh, uh, optimist that Spain is going uh, to be able to handle uh, the problem of uh, uh, the, uh, the public sector uh, debt as it has handled the problem of external debt that uh, prior to the crisis went as high as 10% of the GDP and at the end of the year is going to be in one uh, uh, and a half percentage point of GDP. That means that the adjustment 
uh, very severe as we have made in the in the external sector. I think we will going to be able to do it in the also with the with the with the debt, the Spanish uh, debt, and uh, uh, also referring to Santander. I think that the track record uh, Santander uh, throughout the crisis has been a very positive uh, one due to the elements that I have been underlining earlier, basically diversification of our business to be uh, very uh, in the direction of having a retail uh, banking operation, very focused on that without diverting into activities that are not our core competencies and uh, working in markets where we, we have critical mass and a, a definite uh, competitive uh, advantage. Um, thank you very much uh, for uh, your attention. I would be uh, more, than, uh, more than willing to try to answer uh, your question. Thank you very much for your attention.